Hi Saints, um, I debated on uploading this video or not, um, I gave it some thought and I prayed on it, so I'm going to talk about it. As you all know that, um, you know that our economy is, well it's not exactly the, in the best condition. And so, uh, you have a lot of individuals, people, that are uh, struggling. Some wonder where they're going to get their next meal from. Some wonder uh, where they're going to, uh, how they're going to put a roof over their head. Some wonder... Uh, well, they basically wonder how they're going to make it. I can't tell you I've never been there. I've been there. You know, I'm the type of person that when I'm going through some type of situation, I need to fix it myself. I don't ask for help. I've tried that once, and uh, I'm not going to get into the details, but... The person didn't want to help me, you know, and the way that God works is that when I was on my feet and that person needed help, no one was there to help them. So I know what it's like to be on the other side of the fence, so to speak, when you need help and you got people just uh, saying, Oh, you're a thief, or accusing you of stealing, you know, and, and all you really you ask me for is help, you know. Um, if you are asking for help, you know, and your situation is really that bad, you know, remember God watches all that you do, and, you know, you cannot, uh, lie about your situation because God will know and you will be judged. The reason why I'm bringing this topic up is because I'm getting a lot of emails from subscribers and viewers and stuff like that and they're going through some rough times and in this economy it's it's gonna happen because you know that they're lying saying that there's a lot of jobs and the economy's growing when the reality is it's not, I mean, a lot of retail chains are closing. And it's, it's sad, but it's happening. And lots of people are just, like, they would show up to their job and they don't have a job without notice, you know. I read this one report about how in Germany, um, these Germans one day went to their... Uh, their job, they worked at this five-star hotel. It was a normal work day. They left their work place the day before, and then they were going back in the morning, you know. Then, they found out that they couldn't get into their job. And the reason they couldn't get into their job is because their five-star hotel resort was given to Muslims. You know, the Muslim migrants, the fake migrants, was given to them. Now, um, the story was so heartbreaking because there was a lot of individuals that, you know, still have families to support. Some of them was just getting ready to retire, like, there were days within retirement, of retirement, within days. Some were, uh, years, you know, months, there was a lot of individuals that were months away from retiring. And... It was sad, just watching, you know, that story was sad, it was heartbreaking, you know, brought me to tears, you know. Um, so, people struggling, it seems to be everywhere, and it's going to spread. Now, it doesn't mean for you to give up, or to feel discouraged. You know, you have to trust in God. You have to believe that the Lord will take you through these uh, tribulations. Uh, 
the Lord is going to prepare you because, you know, I've already warned that there's going to be uh, worse trials to come upon the land and the Bible warns of us seeing uh, tribulation unlike anything we've ever seen before. So, you have to trust in God. You have to trust in God that He's going to deliver you. He's going to tell you what you need to do, um, especially in major catastrophes, like He told Joseph in the book of Genesis to save up grain because there was a seven year famine coming. And God always provides. God meaning Jesus Christ, it is up to you to have faith in the Lord. I'm not going to sit here and force you to, I'm just saying a lot of people are going through trials right now. And uh, I've been there. I don't wish these trials upon anyone. Sad situation is very sad. I had this one girl email me, and uh, I'm not going to tell you her names. I obviously, promised not to release any names because you know it's her, it's her, uh, it's her testimony, you know. So obviously, I'm not releasing really her name, but the thing is. She lost, oh, she was the only, um, not the only, I'm going to say, she was the, um, she was a housewife. And she went, she was going through a situation where her husband wasn't hardly home, like he was always out. One, one day her husband comes home and says he just doesn't want to be married to her anymore. He just said he can't do it anymore. She's like, is there anyone else? Is there any this, any that? No. He just said he can't do it anymore. And here she is. She's expecting. And she's about six or seven months, I want to say. Six or seven months pregnant. And she has no money. She's broke. And she doesn't know what to do. You're going to see a lot of trials like this, and they're going to be increasing. Now, the only thing that I can tell you if you are facing something like that, um, I know it's not easy asking for help. Again, you have to be sincere when you're asking for help because there are scam artists out there that will try to take advantage of you, say that they need money, when all they're doing is stealing from you. Stealing a blessing that somebody else could actually need if they actually really need help. That could help somebody else. So, um, there could be an individual out there that really needs help. But again, you got to be sincere when you're asking for help. You can't be lying. These types of trials that I'm telling you are people who are losing homes. Or they're about to face eviction. That's going to happen. I've been there. I mean, at one point in time, because I was laid off from my job, I was facing foreclosure. And I had to go through a home modification and revamp my entire loan. Because not only that, I found out that my loan was, uh, was uh, I was a victim of predatory lending. In other words, uh, I don't know if you remember back then, back in the two, early 2000s, when loans, mortgage loans were given out to people left and right. And I had very good credit. And I didn't know what I was doing. It was my first time buying a home. And I was a victim of predatory lending. When they look for people, um, individuals, even though individuals that have very good credit, and they target you, what they'll do is they'll sell you a house, a home, well below the market value, and what they'll do is they'll they'll do like the re the uh, the so-called lender trying to sell you the house will hire an appraiser to appraise the value of the house actually more than what it is well worth. So let's say if the house is worth fifty thousand, they'll appraise it at a hundred and sell it to you for that, and that's what happened to me. And um, 
when I bought this house, I found out it was well below what I purchased it for. Which, it's awful. I love my house, don't get me wrong. It's great. It's a brand new construction. It's wonderful. You know, it's, it's a great property. But, um, if I had to do it all over again, I would not have done this. But things happen for a reason, you know, because, uh, my land is blessed, my house is blessed, praise God, you know. So I don't have any regrets. I'm just telling you what happened to me. And because of that, I have bad credit. And um, I don't have the best credit, you know. Like you, I struggle to pay my bills every month. I go paycheck to paycheck. My husband got a job, you know, he was out of work for a while. And, uh, you know, praise God, things are getting a little bit better, you know. But we still have our struggles, you know. And I... I I can't seem to get out of it. I'm trying. I gotta give this burden to Jesus Christ. So I share in your struggles. I'm going through my own trials. Um, I told you that my marriage was on the rocks. We're in marriage counseling and we are actually getting along better. Um, me and my husband, we were separated for almost two years. He lived in another household. He still stop by to see his kids. I'm not going to get into the details as to why we were separated, but um, we had a lot of differences. I'm going to leave it at that. We almost very, got very close to divorce, and um, we decided to go to marriage counseling, and we did. We went to marriage counseling for almost the entire last year of us being separated, and we're still in marriage counseling because there's still things to be worked out, but point is, it took us to going on the brink of divorce, to being separated, to save our marriage. Now, I'm not saying that things are, are paradise and they're peachy, hunky-dory, excuse, excuse the expression. We have a lot of work to do, you know. We are in marriage counseling, and our counselor is Jesus Christ. It's not a man-made counselor, it's Jesus Christ. In other words, we go into prayer, we pray to God. We release our uh, burdens of our heart to Him, and we talk to each other about it. And so far, that's been helping. We're marital counseling with the Lord, and uh, we're going to need marriage counseling, most importantly, Jesus Christ, because our marriage still has a lot of work to do. We're not completely out of the woods yet, but we made it over the huddle. We made it over the storm. Now it's just a matter of healing and getting through the woods, so to speak. So, um, so that's still a trial within itself. I understand what you're going through. That's one of the trials I'm going through. And like I said, um, I had to deal with, uh, like I said, the, the fallout of, you know, buying a home, being a victim of predatory lending. You know, I was paying my mortgage, but I was having a struggle. I was falling behind because it was too high of a payment, you know. At first, the payment was reasonable, and then it started to start to skyrocket. So I found out I had this not only this predatory, this, this enormous loan, but it was uh, a balloon loan, um, a loan with a, a variable interest. What that means is the first five years or so of your loan stays fixed, and then it starts to go up, and it caps at a certain rate, which would have been for me like 11, 12 percent. And my credit was good, you know. That even people that had good credit, they met, they gave messed up loan deals like that too. So, I'm telling you people that, um, I know the struggles, I understand. I still have struggles paying my bills too. I'm trying the best that I can. We both have a job and, um, I'm getting another job. So, again, things are getting a little bit better. I'm not the type of person to ask people for help. You will not find me on YouTube asking you for help. I feel as though this is my problem, it's my situation, I have to fix it myself. And if you guys are in the same situation, my situation is not that bad, but if you're facing losing your house, or let's say you're renting, right, and you're about to get your lights shut off, you're about to get evicted, you can go down to your social services department and apply for emergency aid and they will give it to you. If anybody tells you no, that's not true, they're a liar, because that service is available practically everywhere. Not in your third world countries, but it's available in the United States, in your western countries, if you live in Europe, it's available there. And you will get emergency aid. They won't let you get kicked out on the streets, especially if you're pregnant and you have young kids. You will not get kicked out on the streets. You can apply for emergency aid. 
I'm just bringing this up because people are going through struggles. Well, God bless everyone. I hope you have a great day.